Hey everyone, Nick Coley from the Bodybuilding.com podcast here. So uh, we're gonna do something a little different today. One of our regular guests, Caleb Redden, is appearing on the current season of the Titan Games on NBC. Yeah. So um, after every season, or after every episode that he's on, we're gonna have him on to do a little recap where we can get his response, talk about what happened, and you know maybe watch some cool replay stuff like that. Heck yeah. And he made his first appearance last night. You can go watch the highlights on the Titan Games channel on uh, YouTube or wherever else you watch things. Yep. All right, so, so first things first. How are you going to be able to handle the knowledge that forever and ever you're going to be known as the guy that The Rock said is better looking than Oh, Chris man, Hemsworth? dude. When he said that, I was like, "How? somebody please record that. Somebody please. Caleb is called Doc Thor because of his movie star good looks. He looks just like him. It's actually like Oh, him. he does not look like Chris Hemsworth. He, does, he doesn't? He's, He's awesome. better looking than Chris He's Hemsworth. Oh, <laughs> Chris okay, will love that. Enough, fair enough. Was that a surprise to you, or did you see that coming? No, I no, I didn't. I mean, The Rock's got a really good sense of humor, and he's one of those guys that likes to poke fun at everybody, you know? Um, mm-hmm. he, he makes little comments all the time that are just snide remarks that are hilarious, and so I was expecting him to do that to me, you know, make fun of me, but he did, instead he made fun of Chris Hemsworth, which, <laughs> I mean, I feel like now the, the truth is Chris has got to defend himself, and, and he's got to, you know, fire back, so Chris That's Hemsworth, kind of headed up, that man? Way. Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm wondering if if there's going to be an appearance later in the season, He's perhaps. Gonna, where he you're better ha- show Thor up, be man. Thor. <laughs> So, oh, so the great. name of the episode, at least on the NBC app where I was watching it, was The Rock Meets Doc Thor. That was the name of the episode. Gosh, like, So, you know, I still have some hope that they're going to cast you as a villain or as a heel <laughs> or something like that. But so far, it seems like you're, you're being portrayed in a pretty positive light. How, oh, how did yeah. you feel? Were there any surprises? No, it was great. Like, I, I was really thankful to the producers and, you know, obviously to The Rock um, and to NBC for portraying all of us in such a positive light. I mean, they really are doing a good job of... You know, of, of making average folks look like you know Hollywood movie stars and and um, you know bigger than life kind of characters. So I was really grateful. I thought they, I thought they did a great job. I was happy that of all the crap that I said out of all the times I was there, that they didn't catch anything too stupid. I, there's still plenty of opportunity. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of room something. for me to put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so you were uh, you were taking on this guy who's a professional opera singer. Yeah, Michael. Um, he's he, clearly strong, muscular guy. But spoiler yeah. alert: the uh, the hammer of Doc Thor fell on him pretty early. It was the, the, that first event. It was you came out of the gate hot. I, I was I was ready to rock, ready to roll. And and the truth is, we're we're about the same size. In fact, I think he might actually have me by a few pounds. He's a, he's a strong guy. And I don't know what he what his numbers were at the combine, but I felt like they were trying to set us up with the people who were there, it, you know, from the central region, the guys that we had in the central region. They were trying to put us together with people who had similar numbers and size and stuff. So mm-hmm. we were relatively, you know, anatomy-wise, we were relatively similar. But um, I moved pretty quick, and there's no way to prepare for something like that chain link. I mean, you're literally climbing up 15 feet in the air, you know, perpendicular to the ground with someone else chasing you and fighting for the handholds and the chain links moving and swinging and like it was mm-hmm. nothing like that I've ever done before prepared for I had no idea how it was going to go but when the gun went off it was just like go with you know move with intention as quick as you can and you know it went my way and then it was really fun when I hit that platform to grab those chains and pull on those chains like that felt like home you know I've thrown a lot of chains on drilling rigs and that felt like home so that made me feel more comfortable um, but when I jumped back from the platform back onto the chain link, that took some guts. I mean, looking down, like that was a long drop, um, a long drop on a short stop. So you, you definitely had to be committed when you when you went for it. And at that point, my hands were like just on fire and I was just, you know, trying to hold on for dear life. I looked right, back at one yeah. point and saw that I had a little bit of a lead and felt like, now I don't want to mess this up at this point and, you know, made it through okay. But the cool part for me was that Michael... You know, that guy's got a great story. He he is a very unique person. I don't know anybody else who's an opera singer, number one, or I don't know any other opera singers that are built like that. I mean, that guy is really strong, and he's come a long way and made some huge improvements, lost a lot of weight, built a lot of muscle, and, and is inspiring a whole niche of people that I would probably never have any influence on. So I thought that it was amazing, and I wanted him to finish. I wanted him to get through to the end and, and have that feeling of success, you know. He's going to finish. There you go. That a boy. Kind of as we talked earlier, like they became friends. You know, we became we're competitors, but we're we're rooting for each other too. So it was it was cool to see him. And the Rock stopped and was like, "Hey, Rock." The Rock was like, "Hey, listen, Michael, man. Like, you got another event to go." He's like, "This one's over." He's like, "Let's let's 
let's get you down from this chain link. Let's get you moving on to the next one, get you ready to go, because we had another event to get after. And so, yeah, he's got a heart of a lion. Yeah, let's talk about that that other event. So as far as I can tell, it's just like you banging your body against a pipe. Yeah, pretty and, much. <laughs> uh, and I mean, you know, from a purely exercise science perspective, that looked like it was really crappy. Like it was it just not, not good. much fun. <laughs> no, it didn't feel very good at all. It like grip strength after the first piston. You know, my grip strength was tired because you're just hanging up there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a like, big bar. It's a surprisingly it thick is. bar. It's not like a chain link fence, which uh-uh. also wears your grip out. Yeah, it was like doing a deadlift. It was the same kind of motion as doing a deadlift, but like a ballistic deadlift, like a, I don't even, maybe like a power clean, but you were hanging instead of pulling it from the ground. So yeah, it was taxing. And your lats, man, I got down and my lats were on fire. In fact, I had tore my, in the chain link, I had smacked my knee and my knee was huge and swollen and bruised. And uh, I've got a pretty crazy picture of that, a big hematoma. And then on that kick out, I had torn a lat, so I had a bunch of bruising for me, and I felt it when it tore. <laughs> I felt it when it tore, and I was like, oh, no, that, I could tell it wasn't terrible, but I was like, that's going to that's gonna hurt. I think I'll leave a mark. Yeah, I guess looking but, at it, that that would be a good good move to tear a lat on there, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it definitely hurt. And, you know, you get tired, you get fatigued, and that center piston was a lot higher. Um, you know, it's like a hydraulic, um, it's like a hydraulic pump, right? So, like, I was kicking. I felt like I was kicking just as hard, but man, that thing was hard to move. It was right. Tough. Yeah. The first two seemed like they they went pretty quickly, but the third one was just not budging. Michael never made it to the third one. It was kind of fortunate for him, honestly, because yeah, that, was, that, that was thing tough. was just not given, man. No, it, it was definitely hard to move, and it lasts a lot longer than it. Like those events last a lot longer than what they can show on TV, right? So, like, I don't know how long we were up there, but I'm I'm sure it was over ten minutes by the time mm-hmm. both of us had gotten to the to the middle and we're done. So. It took a mm-hmm. while. You're up there kicking and hanging for a long time. So yeah, and that, that got me that got me thinking also about footwear. I imagine that picking the right footwear could give you a serious advantage in oh, a bunch yeah. of these events. It's, if it's you had funny. a pair of climbing shoes on that fence. Oh yeah. And, or if you had a pair of Chris Gethin style oh, right like, wear, big yeah. old army boots yeah. uh, and you had those on that second one, wouldn't that have just been a huge advantage? Yeah, man, it's it's that was like one of the things that made it so difficult. I walked into the arena for the first time to look at what we were doing. Like okay, this is what we're going to do today. Never prepared for this in any way, shape, or form, right? So they told us at the beginning to wear athletic shoes that were all black, right? They didn't want any logos and stuff. So that's hard to find anyways. And then, like, if you had a couple of trial runs and understood the the biomechanics of it, right? But, you know, all things were created equal. It was like, here you go. This is what you're going to do. Here are the rules. Ready, set, go. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. And and speaking of ready, set, go to get to the third event. So you won the first first two, and that put you out on Mount Olympus where you were facing off against somebody who had done that before. Yeah. And I'm assuming you had not done nope. that particular gauntlet before. Yeah. And to make it worse, you were going up against an all-time NFL great, Joe Thomas. Oh, ah, man, NFL great. That dude is literally the Iron Man. He, I think he made it through his whole career without missing any snaps. I mean, you know, no penalties on that guy. Like, he's he's a living legend in the NFL. Right. He's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and from the start, again, you just you looked like you still kind of had the the edge out of the start. I thought, you know, maybe maybe he can do this, and you held that you held a lead for for quite a while. Did you did you realize that you had a little lead again? No, I didn't. I couldn't really tell. I mean, that it's really chaotic. There's lights and fire and the crowd, and like you're really just trying to focus on something that's unique that you've never done before, right? Like flipping mm-hmm. the box was okay. I could tell, like. You, know, we're right. neck you can neck see things blocks. at that yeah. point. You're not crawling right. through a tube. But once we hit that, you know, that upper hand, like, shimmy pole thing. Yeah, kind of climbing monkey yeah. bar handles. I didn't, I didn't know where he was, but watching it last night, I'm like, man, that guy's arms are so long. Like, he just was like, and he's done. Mm-hmm. And then he picks up that pillar. That thing was heavy. And going up that, all I could think of was just don't slip, right? Because there's just these tiny right. little bricks. Like, don't slip. I got to the top and started throwing chains. And at that point, you know, we were 30 feet in the air. We have a small platform. I couldn't really see him. There's bridges falling down, like trying not to, I could see the ground. I didn't want to fall. So jumping over things, moving stuff, like I just kind of lost track of where he was at. And then, Mm -hmm. oh gosh, yeah, when I made it to that cage, I felt like because he's so much bigger than I was that that cage would be an advantage for me. I didn't know where he was. And then watching it, I'd, I just barely had an edge when I jumped over that bridge and made it into the cage. So I think I had an advantage there. But once I got down to the to the bottom and grabbed that ball, holy crap, that thing was, <laughs> oh, man, that was heavy. And I was gassed. Like, my lungs were on right. fire. My legs were on fire. And I think at that point, he had the mechanical advantage because he could stand up and put it over his shoulder. 
leaned forward and his weight just carried the ball and started getting it moving. And I tried that at first, it doesn't show it. I tried grabbing it and turning it and pulling, but I wasn't, I didn't have enough length on the chain or whatever to get it moving. And so I flipped around and started dragging it backwards. And mm -hmm. at that point he'd caught back up and yeah, and then the rest is history. Like he made it through the right. smashing the bricks quicker than I did and made it to the end. So, and it, you know, that was a really, really tough race. I mean, you're basically lifting something heavy every couple of minutes you know, max exertion, full out, and you're sprinting. And yeah, yeah, it was it was a big time. That was tough. Like looking at it, I was thinking to myself, like, ah, oh, this, you know, I should be okay. But uh, after doing it, yeah, I was you've like, done wow. sled drags and things yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. But but at the same time, that that uh, dragging the ball with the chain and the axe and everything. That's the only spot in that whole course where it seems like you have to make a really strategic decision. You're like, all right, am I going quads or am I am I going front facing or am I going yeah. reverse facing? Yeah. And reverse facing is going to be easier to get it going, but man, that can burn you out fast, yeah. you know? And it's all momentum. Exactly. No, that's huge. And and truthfully, like there was a hard to see, but behind the ball there was a flat plate that had rubber on the bottom of it that creates friction. So you've got oh, okay. not only the ball with all the chains, which are awkward and difficult to carry, and they didn't want us to hold on to the hammer. They wanted us to just hold the chains. And then there's that plate that you're dragging behind that slows down your momentum and causes friction because if you would get if you get lucky and roll the ball just right when you start dragging it and it gets on one of those chains, you would have less friction and you could, you know, I think last year they saw that, that people, some people were dragging that thing like crazy because they had less resistance. So they put mm -hmm. this plate on to make it equal for everyone. And uh, okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's no joke. I mean, it's, the ball is heavy in and of itself. I can't remember how much it weighed, but plus all the chains. I mean, it's probably, mm -hmm. it's probably over 350. And, and that, that was the point, only spot uh, where my family's like, they're, they're, everybody's an armchair quarterback all of a sudden. My son is like, stop jerking it. Be smooth. Be smooth. Yeah. And, and I'm like, no, no, no. Loop it around your chest like you're, like you're a plow horse oh, here. You know, everybody's me, all yelling those at the TV. Went my mind too. <laughs> so, but you're, you, so you, you lost just by what, five, six seconds in, oh, in man, the last in one. The so it means you're not a Titan. It was just but, it was so close. Yeah, so close. But that only counts in horseshoes and hand knees. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, so next week, I believe you'll be back there as a competitor yep. again, facing down somebody else. So uh, we'll have you on again then, because because uh, I don't know, I'm I'm just enjoying geeking out on on the events themselves and hearing your perspective on it, because I can tell that they're still rolling around in your mind a little they bit. They are, yeah. Too. I I kind of wake up <laughs> thinking about them all the time still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Next week will be kind of interesting. So the way they've got it set up is. Um, it's like a like the whole organization is a little bit difficult, but obviously there's the celebrity titans who we didn't know, and like I didn't know it was going to be Joe Thomas until he came through the arena that day. Like they kept us, they kept that all hush hush. So we we're like, who you know, are you excited about your celebrity titan? I'm like, I don't even know who it is. You know, they were interviewing us before. I I don't know who they were going to bring. So it was cool to see Joe Thomas walk through, or gonna jog through, and then so you have to beat a titan on Mount Olympus to remain a Titan, right? And so then the people from your region compete against you to try to make it to to that status. But if you lose, um, so you get you get two out of three, right, to make it to Olympus. If you lost those two, so if like for Michael, he was finished for the, the season. I move on to Mount Olympus. I lose on Mount Olympus. Then Joe Thomas stays on Mount Olympus. And then I go to the, the, uh, the uh, redemption bracket so the guys so far, it, it, you know, I don't, I don't think this is a spoiler, but it's just kind of understanding the organization. So Matt Chan lost and Steven both lost against Joe Thomas. So the three of us are going to be in the redemption round. So mm -hmm. that's who's going to be competing next week will be us in the redemption round. And whoever makes it out of that is going to be able to continue on the, on the, uh, the season. And, I mean, you know, to, to listen to it, it sounds unfair that you have to go up against Joe Thomas over and over again in these sorts of things. But at the same time, a Titan got taken down last week. It's true. Yeah, so everybody's it, beatable, So it can man. happen. Yep, everybody's yeah. beatable. It is, it is, it is, it's interesting because, you know, the celebrity Titan, like Joe hasn't had to do kick out and chain link and those type of things. And he's had the experience on the mountain to know. That was the thing is, like, he knew, you know, what was going to be hard, where to save his gas, where to exert himself. Like, because he'd already done it a couple times and already kind of knew, like, all right, this is, I can catch my breath right here versus The me. ball will get him. Yeah. I can, I can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was like, oh, I, he knew that that ball was going to be the equalizer. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's definitely an advantage. Um, and, and the filming, like, you don't know it watching it, but all of those events happened on different days or, and some of them didn't. Some of them were on the same day. So, like, some of us were going back-to-back -back events, and other people had a day in between to, to wait. Um, 
you know, and recover. And so there, you know, there's a lot of variables that go into it that you just don't see. You can't see because it's, you know, it's TV, right? So all those things make it, you know, even that much more interesting for the people who've lived it. For sure. For sure. All right. Well, we're looking forward to having you on again next week. Let's do it again soon. Heck yeah, man. I'm excited. All right. Caleb Redden, look for it on NBC.